Chapter 14, Introduction to Linear Regression and Correlation Analysis. In this video, we'll learn about scatter plots and correlations, as well as how to determine if our correlation is significant. A scatter plot is a two-dimensional plot showing the values for the joint occurrence of two quantitative variables. We can graph these variables to see if there is a relationship. In this case, we have a dependent or response variable that we wish to explain and is denoted by the letter Y. And we have an independent variable, which is used to explain the variation in our dependent variable. This is denoted by X. So for example, on my X axis here, we have square feet of a house, which is the variable that might explain the price of a house. In the Y axis here is the price of a house, if we were to plot our data, we can see where our dots will fall. And looking at the scatter plot, we might see a relationship between square feet and house pricing. So in other words, this is a visual representation of a potential correlation or relationship between two variables. When we cannot study an entire population, we will use sample data. So we refer to this as the sample correlation coefficient denoted by lowercase r, which is also called the Pearson product moment correlation. While here is the formula, we can use Excel to determine the correlation coefficient based on our sample data, since we cannot simply eyeball a scatter plot. The correlation coefficient is a way to measure the relationship between two variables. So while the scatter plot is helpful to visually see a potential relationship, the correlation coefficient tells us more information specifically the strength of the linear relationship between two variables. And the coefficient is going to range between negative one and positive one. If our correlation coefficient is plus or minus one, this indicates a perfect linear relationship. If our correlation coefficient is a zero, this indicates no linear relationship. So for instance, in our example, we can see how strong of a relationship square feet might have to houses. And again, this is where logic comes into play. If we imagine Southern California homes, we can understand that the larger the house or the more square feet, we can potentially expect the house pricing to be higher. Here are some examples of our correlation coefficients matching their scatter plots. So for instance, in this first one where R equals positive one, this is a perfect linear relationship. Moreover, it's a positive relationship because as X gets bigger, so does Y. Where R is negative one, this is known as a negative relationship. Again, this is also a perfect linear relationship because we can see all the dots fall on this line. Whereas X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. In this third example, we also see a positive relationship, but it's not as perfect as we saw in the first example. So for instance, the correlation coefficient r here would be positive 0.7. So it's going in the positive direction, but it's not perfect. Or in this instance, we see a negative relationship where r is negative 0.55. We can imagine a line here where our dots are going in a particular direction, but it's not perfect like we saw in the second example. And in our last two examples here, we can see that both of our r's are zero in that there is no relationship that we can see, positive or negative. Our data points are all over the place. Once we obtain the correlation coefficient using Excel, we must test if it is significant, because recall in chapter seven, we learned that sample data is subject to sampling error since we're not studying the entire population, we're just studying a subset. So we have to test if the relationship between our variables is really statistically significant. Our null and alternative hypotheses are stated like this. This Greek letter here is not a P, it's pronounced rho, R-H-O, and it represents the population correlation coefficient. So when rho equals zero, that means there's no correlation. But if rho doesn't equal zero, that means some correlation exists. If rho turns out to be negative, we have a negative correlation. If rho is positive, then we have a positive correlation. 
Now, just like in chapters 9 and 10, we use our sample data to develop a test statistic for our hypothesis test. So we're going to use our R, the sample correlation coefficient from Excel, along with our sample size in order to find the t-test statistic. So here's the formula right here. Note that the degrees of freedom for this kind of test is n minus 2. So let's go ahead and do a practice problem from the homework. Here's problem 12. A regional retailer would like to determine if the variation in average monthly store sales can, in part, be explained by the size of the store measured in square feet. So here it's helpful to use some logic if we imagine a store, we can see that the bigger the store, potentially we might have more sales on a monthly basis because the store can carry more product. But we'll actually do a correlation analysis to see if this is the case because perhaps the store is not maximizing its square footage to really carry the right products at the right time to increase its store sales. So a random sample of 21 stores was selected and the store size and average monthly sales were computed. So we're gonna go ahead and use the chapter 14 practice problems Excel file that I've provided in Canvas to go through this problem. So it's helpful to make sure to identify our dependent variable and our independent variable. Recall that our dependent variable is the variable that we're trying to explain or understand. So in this case, we want to understand the average monthly sales. And the independent variable is the variable we think might explain the dependent variable. This would be the size of our store in square footage. We think perhaps that the square feet will impact our dependent variable of monthly sales. So part A asks us to develop a scatter plot for the two variables and to describe what relationship, if any, exists. So looking at our chapter 14 Excel file that I've provided, note that this is the specific textbook problem. The MyStatLab homework will have slightly different numbers for everybody's assignment. So in order to create our scatter plot, we'll go to the insert option. Here you'll see a variety of charts available to choose from. So we'll go ahead and just select our data by highlighting it. And then finding the chart option of a scatter plot. So here we can see scatter. Clicking on that, Excel is going to create the scatter plot we need to see if there's a potential relationship between our square footage, which is in my X axis, and our average monthly sales, which is in the right axis. In looking at our scatter plot, we can see that the dots go up and towards the right, meaning as the square footage increases, so does our average monthly sales. This suggests that there is a positive linear relationship between our two variables, x and y. In part b, we're asked to compute the correlation coefficient between store size in square feet and our average monthly sales. So here, there's actually a couple of different ways we can calculate our correlation coefficient. The first two options are using Excel, and the third option is to use StatCrunch. So in our first option, if we wanted to use the Excel function corel, we would type in equals corel parentheses and then highlight our first array, which is our x data, hit comma, and then select our y data, which is our sales. Close our parentheses and hit enter. And we get a correlation coefficient of 0.8515. Now we can also use data analysis uh, if you've already downloaded the data analysis tool pack by going to data, data analysis, finding the correlation option, and hitting OK. Then for our input range, when I click on my box, I'll go ahead and select all of my data. Clicking on the box again or hitting return Note that I'm going to check labels in first row because I did select the labels of store size and average monthly sales. And I'm gonna go ahead for my output range, put it on the same page so we can see everything side by side. So clicking on output range, I have to tell it where to put. So I will click on my box here and choose um, F1. 
click on my box to go back to the menu and hit OK. So here, if I open this up, I can see that the correlation coefficient provided to me through my data analysis tool is the same correlation coefficient when I used the Excel function of Corel. So make note of our correlation coefficient, our lowercase r, at 0.8515. So I'm just going to show our correlation coefficient using our data analysis tool pack table. And again, our lowercase r is 0.8515. Now that might seem like it's a strong relationship because it's close to one, but we don't really know until we do a hypothesis test related to this. So we need to test if our correlation coefficient is statistically significant. This is what we'll do in part C. So part C asks us to conduct a hypothesis test to determine if a positive correlation exists between store size and average monthly sales. We're also instructed to use a level of significance of 0 0.025. So based on our question here, we want to know if a positive correlation exists. So recall when we're developing our hypotheses tests, it's helpful to look for context clues. Whenever we see words that provide directions, such as greater than, less than, more, fewer, bigger, smaller, or in this case, positive, we know we're going to be dealing with the right side of our normal distribution curve. In other words, our null and alternative hypotheses will look like this, where our row for the alternative hypothesis is greater than zero. This is what we're going to be testing for because of the word positive. That means we're going to be on the right side of our normal distribution curve. If we know the alternative hypothesis, then we know that the null hypothesis would just be in the other direction and our null always has the equal sign in it. That's how we'll set up our null and alternative hypotheses. So with our alternative hypotheses set as greater than, pointing to the right, we know this is going to be an upper tail test. The degrees of freedom for this kind of hypothesis test for correlation analysis is n minus two. So because our data set that we were provided had a sample size of 21 stores, and recall in the story, or on the worksheet, you can double check, it should say 21 stores were analyzed. 21 minus two gives us 19. And our level of significance, or the alpha, is 0 0.025. Now these next three parts should look familiar. We've been doing this for the last few weeks now. Our decision rule states here that we will reject the null if our calculated value of the test statistic is blank than the critical value. Again, we look at the alternative hypothesis because this will give us some direction. It says greater than zero, so our rule is going to be we reject the null if our calculated value of the test statistic is greater than our critical value. Now to get the critical value, you can go to Appendix F, look for the one tail test up at the top of the table, go across to the significance level of 0.025, and go down to the degrees of freedom row of 19. And that will give us 2.093. Or, as you can see here, we can use this formula in Excel for the upper tail critical value. Recall I provide this formula in the two Excel files for chapter nine and chapter 10. Now for our calculated value of the test statistic, this is the formula that we'll use where the R, or our correlation coefficient, was obtained from Excel in part B. So I'll plug in my R wherever I see it, and then my N, which is my sample size of 21. So plugging in our numbers, in the top is my correlation coefficient of 0.8515, and then in the denominator we have the square root of our one minus R squared divided by our degrees of freedom, in this case, n minus two or 21 minus two. Putting it all together, our test statistic then is 7.08. Now for part C, we have to make a conclusion. So going back to our decision rule, our rule stated that we would reject the null if our test statistic is greater than our critical value. So in this case, looking at our test statistic of 7.08,
we can see that it is greater than our cutoff point or critical value of 2.093. So because our test statistic t of 7.08 is greater than our critical value of 2.93, 2.093, we will reject the null. And we can conclude that there is a positive correlation between store size in square feet and the average monthly sales. My tip is after we make the decision, in this case it says reject the null, imagine crossing out this null statement and focusing on what's left. In this case, our alternative statement is what's left. And that's what we would interpret. It turns out that rho is greater than zero, meaning rho is bigger than zero. And what's bigger than zero? Positive numbers. So that's why we can say that we can conclude that there is a positive correlation between our two variables.